Welcome back everyone to On.net. I'm your host, James Montemagno, and today I am ecstatically excited because I have one of my best friends in the entire world here to talk about .net and IoT, the one and only Brian from Wilderness Labs. How's it going, Brian? Fantastic, ecstatically yeah. excited, I like that. That's, yeah. That's like leveled up. It's been a long time. We go way, way, way back, all the way to our Xamarin days, and you have some really, really exciting things. Now you've been in and around the .NET channels, on .NET Conf and a bunch of other things, talking about Meadow and Wilderness Labs and building the amazing platform for embedded IoT for .NET developers. And there's been a vast amount of awesome stuff that y'all are building. Before we get into that, now, people may not know a lot about Wilderness Labs, where they came from, all these things. You're the CEO and founder of Wilderness Labs and this entire platform. Can you give us a little background of the company, what your mission is, and what you're trying to do? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so um, like you said, we go back all the way to the Xamarin days. And, uh, you know, after Xamarin got acquired, I was sort of looking around thinking about the next thing to do. And <clears throat> In my entire career, I've been building hardware, right? Yeah. And the thing about hardware is that it's hard. You know, everyone says hardware is hard. And it's and what's really interesting is that it's actually not hardware that's hard, it's building the apps, it's the software side of things, right? And so <clears throat> we set out, our mission is to make building hardware as fast and easy as building like web or mobile apps, right? Yeah. And it's really interesting today because if you want to build hardware, you know, the first thing is that is that you have to be a real hardware wizard. You yeah. know, it's most professional IoT things that get out that de get deployed out to production out to, you know, out to the world. Uh, you know, in order to build those, you sort of have to be a hardware wizard. You have to know embedded C and you have to know a lot of like hardware stuff. You kind of have, have to have an EE hat, electrical engineering, and and then um, you have to just learn a lot of low level coding and things like that. And then when you actually deploy those things out to the field, it gets even harder because, you know, how do you keep those things alive? How do you push out updates to those things? How do you even know that your yeah. machines are alive, you yeah. know? And so for us, what we, like I said, what we set out to do was like to turn that on its head. So what we have done is we have built a full stack IoT platform where, um, you know, we really, what we've done is, is really enable .NET developers to sort of get into this space and build professional IoT devices, IoT solutions, and then also manage any device, any IoT device, uh, any embedded device out in the field and make sure that, you know, you have over-the-air updates and, and uh, you have health monitoring and things like that. Oh, so, so you have not only the hardware platform, the software and ecosystem, but also sort of the cloud infrastructure yeah. that enables you to do kind of, I would say, yeah, full end-to-end -end IoT for .NET developers. And we have a lot of gizmos and gadgets here, which is really exciting. This is the largest maybe production of on.NET that I think I've ever done because IoT is so cool because of all these little contraptions. And we were talking about there's really a platform that you build that you can then plug in thousands of sensors and devices into, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. So what are we actually looking at here is if someone's like, hey, you know, I'm a .NET developer, I want to build IoT things, what, what, what do I buy from you? Like, how do I get started? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, so I guess the first thing is like to kind of understand what we've built, right? Yeah. And and so there's there's kind of two pieces to it. There's the uh, there's the device side, which we call Meadow OS, um, and then there's the cloud side, which is Meadow Cloud. Okay. And on um, the device side, Meadow OS, basically what we've done is we've taken an open source uh, micro RTOS or real time operating system called NutX, and then we've built on top of it a bunch of stuff. And we and what we've done is we've taken the .NET runtime and we've gotten that working on microcontrollers, like cool. embedded low power devices. So you can uh, use your existing .NET uh, skills and write full .NET, modern .NET code on microcontrollers. Okay. And what's really fantastic about that is not only do we have that .NET runtime, but we've also created really beautiful hardware APIs. Oh, okay, yeah. That's one of the things that I'm always used to, like you're saying, is like, how do I even know what API to pick? And it's always like, you know, trying to figure that out, it always seems like very complicated. So there's, there's a suite of APIs that you built on. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and what's really cool is that those APIs work, they're just .NET standard APIs, and they work anywhere you can run .NET. So oh, you can cool. run them on the Meadow um, microcontroller devices, or you can run them on like a Raspberry Pi, 
or uh, Jetson Nano if you want to do, you know, like high-end AI, you want to do vision work and stuff like that. Yeah. That's right. And Very then cool. on top of that, we have this massive set of peripheral drivers. So it's super plug and play. You can go out and you can get, you know, peripherals like this is a, a an air quality sensor. This is a particulate. Well, cool. Yeah, particulate yeah. monitor. And this tells you like, you know, how many particulates are in, in the air. Um, and you just, you simply plug that in and then we have a driver for it, right? And we've Very got cool. hundreds of drivers now. So basically any peripheral that you can think of, you plug in and you have an API. And um, like I said, the great thing about this is that you can run that, whether it's on a microcontroller that you would put out in a production, or if you need some more horsepower, you can run that on a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi, oh, etc. Cool. And then we have this cloud piece. And the cloud piece is something that we just uh, we just announced, we just launched, and it's called Meadow Cloud. Okay. And Meadow Cloud enables you to maintain those devices out in the field. And that means things like over-the-air updates, mm. push messaging or push notifications as we call yeah. them in, in web. You know, that's an MQ, MQTT message that you can push out to devices. Very cool. Um, also, settings synchronization. So oh, you wow. can actually change a setting for some devices and then just push those out to the devices um, and then they will synchronize and, and things like that. And and the great thing about Meadow Cloud, so today it updates, um, you can do over the air updates and whatnot for the Meadow microcontroller devices, but we're also launching, we're getting ready to uh, launch our Linux support. So oh, cool. any embedded Linux device, so a Raspberry Pi, like I said, Jetson Nano, or even wow. some of those small, now there's these really cool embedded Linux devices that are like feather form factors. So, yeah. so in this in this form factor, this sort of like stick of gum. <laughs> That's right, yeah, it's so, That's wild, yeah. so small. Um, and we're also adding uh, MCU boot support, which would enable you to uh, manage any microcontroller device. Uh, okay. You know, so if you're, it, so you don't have to, you don't have to use the .NET experience to write, you know, apps. It's kind of a premium experience. But if you're writing apps in, in like embedded C mm -hmm. or MicroPython or device script or something, then then you'll be able to manage those devices out in the field as well. Very so. cool. So you're saying like I'm used to the I'm used to the process of like I want to get my my software onto my little board. I'm used to like what's kind of happening here is it's plugged into my machine. I go mm -hmm. into like Visual Studio or VS Code and I can do that. I'm assuming I can do that, right? Because you know .NET, I'm assuming I'm using VS Code. Yes, or Visual Studio as well. Yeah, yeah, you can. So you can use VS Code or Visual Studio. Um, we support both uh, Visual Studio, Mac, Windows, and VS Code for Mac, Windows, and Linux. And oh, we have really great cool. plugins, extensions. So you just go to the extension um, marketplace. You download the Meadow extension, and then you have full .NET integration on these devices. Very so, cool. As Anders said, you you know you hit the big button and deploy Boom. your code, your .NET code to Boom. the uh, to the device. Done. Yeah, and well, debugging as well. And you're also saying though, like once I put these devices, because they're not just going to be sitting by my computer all day. I might be putting them out in the field. I might be having them out in my garden. I might be having them rolling out my enterprise, every single factory that I have. You're saying that with the Meadow Cloud you what go in and hit a big button in Meadow Cloud and then deploy it to thousands of devices automatically OTA? Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, that's like exactly. I just described the product. That's exactly yeah. that's exactly cool. it. Actually and it and it's and it's even more than that, right? So basically yeah. Uh, in in large scale IoT installations, you also have like large scale data, right? Yeah. So we spent a lot of time working on data integrations as well. So with Meadow Cloud, you know what we do is we provide sort of the the device side and device services uh, to your cloud. Okay. So if you're so a lot of a lot of enterprises would have uh, big data stuff in Azure. You know, you might have digital twins. Mm -hmm. You might have uh, existing infrastructure where you have all kinds of models and things like that. And so what we do is make it super easy to take the data that's on your devices and then, you know, that can synchronize to Meadow Cloud or you can talk directly because you have all this mm -hmm. the .NET APIs. You yeah. can talk directly to Azure IoT Hub or, you know, your own web services. It's just .NET. That's, it's just <laughs> .NET. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a network stack. That's yeah. right. Right. And yeah. then, you know, we've got all these data synchronizations between Meadow Cloud mm. and these big data backends. So oh, you wow. Can so push... I can have like one API basically and then from your backend disperse. That's right. Wow, yeah, that's cool. right. So you can send from uh, Meadow Cloud, you can send uh, sensor readings to Azure Event Hubs. 
you oh, know, yeah. and then event hubs and you can, you know, you send the data on from event hubs to wherever, or, or you can put it to straight to data cake. So you can have like yeah. really nice visualization. And, and the nice thing about this is again, you know, the thing about IOT is it's not about one device. It's not even about a hundred device. It's yeah. hundred devices. It's really about having hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of devices spread out in, in different installations. So you might have a factory that has a thousand devices here. You might have a factory over here that has 10,000 devices. And all of that data, you know, eventually you want to wind up in some, you know, some back end where you can look through and you can cycle through history and you can look yeah. at, you know, you can look at data over time and whatnot. So we've spent Very a lot cool. of time on those integrations. Nice. And now you all have been around for a while. You have some big major releases. And I'm imagining some people are using this product out in the field. Like, do you have like a, like someone you talk about like a, that's using it in the real world? Yeah, that's right. So um, we just held our first in-person developer conference, cool. which was which is pretty fun. And at the Dev conference, we call it Dev Camp. You know, in nice. keeping in theme of Wilderness Labs. Yeah, we uh, launched announced Meadow V1L. Oh, nice. Um, yeah, so we were so we ran a Kickstarter three almost four years ago. We were in stealth for like the first three years. <laughs> We ran a Kickstarter. We knocked it out of the park. Thanks. You were part of that. I was a backer. Um, yeah. He was a backer. <laughs> and then we were in beta for uh, three and a half-ish years. And mm -hmm. then, yeah, at DevCamp, we went V1O. And we do have some really interesting customers. So uh, we really, you know, our, this is a, an enterprise IoT platform with a yeah. strong emphasis on security, right? Yeah. So we have customers in critical infrastructure and defense. The Navy is using this on submarines to wow. uh, to get data of critical uh, parts, boilers and things like that. And then it's really interesting when you go in and you want to maintain these things, you can actually see a live view. You can get a, di there's a digital twin and yeah. you can see a live view of like how things are operating. Oh, cool. And if you're going to go uh, service a boiler, for instance, you can see real-time data of the temperature of different parts of it and wow. what's on and what's off. Wow. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Um, and critical infrastructure, just down by me, the uh, there's a water treatment facility that uses Meadow. Uh, it does a bunch of um, upstream man wow. upstream uh, data, uh, data management, data, data listening to uh, streams and rivers. Uh, does uh, like pH and turbidity and things like that, and then yeah. and then they use those to sort of forecast what they need to do in their um, in their treatment center, and uh, we've got uh, folks doing a lot of industrial uh, work with Meadow. So uh, you know Meadow's really great in industrial industrial scenarios. We have uh, a company that does energy monitoring for. Yeah large equipment yeah. and what it does is really cool. So it listens to the energy usage and then also the vibration of a machine. Oh, wow, yeah. Right, and from yeah. that data, you can actually tell like, hey, this, uh, this machine is pulling too much amperage probably the motor, the electrical motor needs to be replaced. Or, you know, there's this vibration that we're picking up. There yeah. must, there's a bearing out, right? So oh, you wow. can, so before the machine blows up and the whole factory has to shut down, what they can say is like, hey, we need to do some maintenance on machine, you know, X and Y over here. So we're gonna yeah. shut down at the night, you know, and do preventative maintenance so that you are actually uh, stay up on, you know, your, your industrial machinery, your factory doesn't shut down. That's so cool. It's so cool to hear like the wide range, right? Because sometimes when we talk about IoT, like sometimes people have in their mind, like, oh, just like, oh, it's just doing like a temperature setting, right? Sensor or something yeah. like that. No, but there are these real world engaging scenarios that are playing out. And these things are all around us all the time, basically, right? They're in our house, right? There we, there's like, I have, I literally have a, on my, on my light switch, it's a little tiny device that literally just turns on and off my light switch. And it's a little thing I can connect to Bluetooth and it's just doof, doof, and it's on a little timer, right? Small things like why things that are like you said are automating like all these processes which is cool now there's a lot set up here do you want to jump in and actually i want to see this thing in action there's a lot of things can you describe what what is going on here and what are we yeah. going to see today i'm really yeah, excited absolutely so we've got um we've got a, a solution set up here which is kind of interesting this is a tank this is a tank monitor so we're actually getting we have um so we've got a project lab here okay. and a uh, project lab is really cool it is a so, so when you get started with Meadow, there's a couple of things that you can start with. You can start with like a dev kit. You can get this feather board okay. um, and start, you know, you can, you can plug it into a breadboard and you can start breadboarding and things like that. But what I really like is this thing we call, it's a, a project lab. And here it is without, without the top. Um, but the, 
I think we have one with it. Oh, here's one with uh, with the top, top. on. Yeah, oh, so cool. Looks very, like a little video game controller. Right? Yeah, very sharp. And this is uh, this is cool. This is our carbon edition because we've printed this in PLA oh, carbon nice. fiber. And yeah, so this is really fantastic because uh, what this allows you to do is prototype and build IoT solutions without any breadboarding, without any soldering or whatnot, because it's got, the brilliant thing about the Project Lab Board is it's got all this IO. So it's got yeah. these two things up here. These are micro bus uh, slots, and I've got a couple of micro bus click boards in here. And, and there are literally like thousands of these click boards. Oh, cool, um, yeah. So Microelectronica or Electronic, which makes these, has like 5,000 click boards. Oh, wow. um, this is a current transducer. So this, this is actually, you can put this uh, at an outlet and it will listen to how much current is being used. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. This is really interesting because we have a, we have a, a customer that is using this in a smart outlet. So, so this is really, fan, this is, this is really like interesting, uh, project because in Africa, for instance, they don't have a lot of the legacy coal and gas uh, energy creation, mm. the fossil fuel energy. Most of it, like 75% is renewable energy. Oh, wow. So solar, um, some hydroelectric and, and whatnot. But a lot of folks still cook on gas. And so what's happening is that governments are trying to encourage folks to switch over to electric cooking. Yeah. And so what happens is that you can, if you switch over to electric cooking, uh, you can get carbon credits from, mm. So basically what happens is in industrial uh, manufacturers, they buy these carbon credits and then um, they will, the government will pay you to switch from gas ah. to electric cooking. And yeah. so what they need is these smart outlets that measure the current, yeah. do a little bit of AI on their list and then say, hey, they're using electric pressure cooker or they're using a hot plate because yeah. here's the signature. Yeah. And that's done through this um, wow. current wow. transducer. Yeah. So nice. anyway, a little sidebar there. But, but so this has a ton of different IO and you can just plug you just plug anything you want in. So it's got these micro bus slots. It's got um, these Seed Studio Grove connectors and there's like digital, there's analog, there's a UART serial. Um, and then it's got this Adafruit or SparkFun uh, Stemma Quick slash QD uh, connector or Stemma QD slash Quick connector. Everyone's got their <laughs> own names, right? And you can, this is really cool because you can just plug them in via cable yeah. And you don't have to do any breadboarding or whatever. So nice. this is that this is that air quality sensor that I was telling you about before. Nice. You simply plug it in and you go. So what we have built here is a a, a water jug monitor, um, and it's and it's using a, a time of flight sensor which measures the time that uh, an LED light uh, photon packets uh, bounce off the bottom and then come back in the time that it it yeah. takes. Is the distance right? See how much water is in it. Basically, if I have a big cistern or something like that exactly. out there, right? Or maybe even, um, I guess it doesn't even have to be water. It could be like trash. If this is a trash can, for example, That's, right? Yeah. So that could be anything in here. How full is this? Is I was walking, <laughs> I was walking from the hotel where I'm at, and like you kind of see like, oh, that trash can's empty. That one's not empty. That one's overflowing, right? right? Um, so I can imagine there's a scenario here that you know maybe could give me some real time data. I'm thinking roller coaster tycoon days, right? When That's was, right. When that's... I was to have my little janitor uh, person going around and emptying out stuff, yeah. Yeah, no, that's yeah. exactly it. That's really funny because I was talking to Scott Hanselman the other day, and he and I was showing him this, and he's like, you know what, the, this should be this should be a garbage can. Yeah. And um, we were, I was laughing because that's what I had suggested internally when we were building this, and everyone's like, no, well, not a garbage <laughs> can. He said, listen, here's a scenario: Disney parks mm -hmm. have garbage cans all over their all yeah. over the theme park, right? And they have kind of a traveling salesman. Yeah. issue because what they need to do is they need to look at the data over time of like how these garbage cans fill up and it's yeah. not about it's not about a reading at any one time you know like yes okay so so this garbage can is full someone needs to go out and 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 empty it right that's somewhat interesting but what's really interesting is looking at the trend data and yeah. then you can actually program you can t you can you can basically write a uh, uh a garbage pickup algorithm yeah. that's optimized for how often and when these garbage cans need to be picked up. And so you can make these uh, make that much more efficient. You don't have the overflowing garbage cans and you know you don't have folks like wandering back and forth across the park to empty empty yeah. garbage cans, right? So so yeah, so this and it's further interesting because what we're finding is that 
a lot of IoT solutions are really just repurposing of the same hardware setup. Mm. So this has a distance sensor, um, and it could be using this this sort of this cheap one, or it could be using a high end one, which was around here someplace, was wandered off. Um, so we have a high end uh, distance sensor. You know, I have no idea where it went. <laughs> oh, It'll show up sometime. Hey, look, it's, it's oh, flying we we in. Got a guest appearance. Hey, there we go. So this is a high-end distance sensor. Oh wow! And this um, actually would screw into like a cistern. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and what's really cool is that our platform makes uh, is makes all this code super easy because it's abstracted. So these are both okay. I range finders. Um, so it doesn't matter the hardware then. It that's just, right. It's just plug and play. Let's plug and play. Wow. And 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 like you said, this could be a garbage can. This could be a well monitor, etc. So yeah. So so let me walk you through what we actually have here. Yeah. So what you, are we seeing on the little device here? So you can see on the device. Um, so built into the project lab is a bunch of sensors already. In addition to the I/O, there's also a light sensor. There's temperature, pressure, humidity. Okay. Uh, there's an accelerometer. Oh, yeah, and it's on there too. You can see the temperature and the humidity and the pressure and everything on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Cool. That's right. So one of the things actually would be really nice to do is to add like a shake, you know, like if there's an oh, impact yeah. event or something, you know, or you can put this on the top of the can and you, when the lid comes off, you can say, oh, lid's open or yeah, whatever. Yeah, they refill the bottom. So we are measuring the time of flight on this um, and it's empty right now. But as I move this, as I move this closer to uh, mm -hmm. something that's oh, wow, there it solid, goes. you can see that it, it updates and we, you know, it goes up to being full. So, yeah. All right, so let's take a look at some code because right. I made a lot of claims here, right? <laughs> I got time to back them up. So um, yeah, so this is what I've got here is our tank level monitor application up, and you can actually see here's real time data as it um, you know as as it's reading that sensor, and as I take the lid off and I move it, you can see oh it's getting different um, fill percentage. So uh, yeah, real time, real time data, and and the first thing that you'll notice as we look at this. So this is our main Meadow app class. Is this is all just .NET, and yeah. not only is it .NET, but it's like full modern .NET. Modern .NET so yeah. you've got tasks. You know, you got async await. Um, you've got this is you know the, all the new pattern matching and stuff. You've got you know full generics. It's really it's .NET. real .NET. It's yeah. real .NET. Yeah. And you want to use. A uh, code, you want to use NuGet packages, you drop them in. We're uh, .NET Core 3.1, okay. .NET Standard 2.1 compatible today. Nice. And we're actually rebasing and, and bringing it to .NET 8 wow, as well. Wow, very so, cool. Nice. Yeah, That's awesome. Yeah, pretty awesome. Um, and so, you know, taking a look at this this application here, you, again, um, it's super simple. This is our, so, you know, just like in an iOS app or an Android app, you've got a set of events that come in in your main class. So mm -hmm. here we got initialize. And then we create this main app controller, which is like the main brains of our of our solution. And we've got a few things here. We've got IoT Hub Manager. We've got some iTank level hardware and a monitor. And um, is really cool. We knew up these, uh, you know, we we knew up some sensors, and then just as if you were doing any other .NET code, we've got events, um, and again, async void. So we got really, you know, pretty awesome .NET there. And then uh, we're we're actually talking to IoT Hub, so this data oh, wow. is live going up at, into Azure, and so we've simply added in the IoT Hub NuGet package. Oh wow! You know, and and in here you there's I could walk through this, but uh, everyone. Knows knows what IoT, you know, IoT Hub app uh, code looks like. If we go over to the IoT Hub, you can see the messages are coming in. Um, and super easy. Again, this is all just .NET. And then we have this uh, real-time digital twin of that data as well. So what we're doing, and this is a really common enterprise data scenario, right? Because yeah. you've got all this data coming into uh, your backend. So in this case, it's going into IoT Hub, but it could be going into like Microsoft Event Hub, right? Yeah. Or anywhere else. Yeah. And then we've got an Azure function that is that it's sending the data to Azure function, and then hmm. you could go to your digital twin. Now, in this case, we've created our own digital twin, which is an ASP.NET website. Oh, cool. um, and you can see graphs oh, of wow. real-time data of yeah. the volume and then also the temperature over time, which is super nice. interesting. Yeah. And uh, what's cool about this is, you know, so 
everyone talks about digital twins and there's yeah. a great service called Azure Digital Twinning but Azure but digital twin as a as a concept is is sort of broader than that right mm. it's the idea that you have some sort of cloud based or local based view of real time uh, hardware of, of of things out in the field that are deployed and so yeah. in this case we've built a digital twin with just an asp. asp.net website, right? Yeah. Now you could also use Azure Digital Twins, the actual digital twin service as if well. If you wanted to, yeah. Yeah, that's Very right. Cool. That's awesome. It's cool to see that. And like so that, that's a good breakdown too. We talked about digital twins, but it, it's the idea is it's it's a it's a digital another representation of your physical hardware basically. Yeah. Yeah. In general. Right. So that's really cool. That's right. Awesome. And there's something else I want to show here which is really, really cool. So Right here, we're deploying to the device, yeah. right? And and just like we, just like mobile development, when you deploy to the device, it takes a little bit of time, right? Because you're deploying to another physical device, yeah. and it's got to package it up, it's got to send it over the wire and whatnot. What if you could instead instead of deploy to the device, what if you could like simulate or run it on the machine itself? Oh wow, yeah. And so so yeah. So what we've done is we have uh, this Meadow desktop. Uh, uh, this Meadow Desktop uh, product or feature, and what that does is enable you to run this app as just like a .NET app oh. on your desktop, and you can simulate sensors, or you can talk to actual hardware. So you can oh, wow. plug in something like a, um, a USB FT232 board, which which basically gives you I squared C SPI digital I/O running from a computer, and you can actually just run hardware oh, wow. and build on your app and, and build on. Uh, on your machine, and what this does is it takes the inner loop, which is yeah. you know build, deploy, debug, and brings that down to zero. Oh wow! Right? Cool. The, the time to deploy and debug is basically you know there's no time at all. So if I go here, we have this tank level monitor UI, and if I deploy, if I figure out how to do this, here we go. Hit hit the big button. So I hit the big button on this uh, tank monitor UI. And what it's gonna do is it's Whoa, gonna cool. pop up. Yeah, this, so this is a WinForms app and you can see uh, this is a simulation of the display that's on the project lab. And what's cool is if I wanna do some changes here so I can go into this um, tank level monitor UI. And in this case, we're not actually sharing code, but we should be and we can, in the, you know, we just didn't get around to it, but uh, let's make some changes. So I want to change the background color and the foreground color. I want to actually, let's swap those. So let's change this to black and let's change this one to white. If I can type white. All right, we're going to save it. If I get the right Windows magic. I'm so used to Mac, there you go. <laughs> Control S, S versus Command S, right? We hit the play button and um, almost instantly, this comes up and there it oh, is. Nice. It's, it's cool. swapped. So like yeah, if you're awesome. doing hardware and you're writing your app, what you can do is before you even have hardware, yeah. uh, you can simply use this Meadow Desktop That's cool. feature yeah. and do instant deployment, instant development, instant turnaround time and do everything in your app. You know, you can write all your code to, to integrate with the cloud. Yeah. Um, you can simulate sensors. We actually, if you come over here, if we go back over into the code, we have this simulated distance sensor. Oh, wow. So you can actually like kind of mock it out a little bit. That's yeah. exactly it. So yeah. we have in here and in, in, in the read method, we basically take whatever the current uh, reading is and we increment or, or decrement um, some random amount. And then that's what we saw when we were looking at this screen, it's basically just doing a random reading. Very so, cool. Yeah. Nice. I like yeah. that because to me, one of the things that I was so used to is that slow iterative cycle yeah. over and over again. But again, like you said, like I might be on a plane and I don't want to take out all my IoT devices, but I can continue to develop. Which yeah, cool. that's right. All right, I want to wrap maybe with one of the coolest things. I mean, it's all cool, but one of the coolest things that I actually got to see before we did this, which was the over-the-air updates. Ah, um, yes. Yeah, we should see that in action. This blew my mind. Now, we need to do a uh, little switcheroo of the equipment here. So let's fade out to the next scene. And we're back. Ooh. All right. So we have a whole new setup here, which is really great, and a brand new uh, project lab up here. And one of the coolest things that we just talked about was the OTA update. So 
What does that actually mean? What does it look like? Because you showed it to me earlier and I was blown away, to be honest with me, with you. So um, I want to see it in action. Yeah. So um, we've got, we'll pretend that this is a device that's out in the field, right? So deployed somewhere out in a factory or whatever. And up on my screen here, I have an app and it's it's a very simple app. Okay. Um, it's, it's actually just the Project Lab demo application. And what I've got in here is I've got sort of two different versions of it. I've got one where the LED on the board is red and one of them where the LED on the board is blue. And what I've done is I've taken this app and I've built it and then I've uploaded these packages to Meadow Cloud. So I go over to Meadow Cloud here and you can see that these two packages that I have, so I have my Project Lab uh, red and I've got my Project Lab blue and I've got my devices here. In this case, I've got just this one device that I've added to this collection. And um, what I can do is these are, this device here is in my general collection. Uh, so if I go to collections, I can see general and that's where that device is. And then I can go to this and I can say, well, it's uh, going red. Yeah, right? what color? So, Let's zoom in on here. So yeah, you can so see there's the little, under the two down here, we got the little red. Down there, that's that's the one, right? And it's, it's cool. You sell this out, output. And that's yeah, right. that's right. All the real time stuff. Yep. Um, so I can publish the blue one, and I click publish, and then I'm going to go over here. And this is I've got I'm connected to the just the console output on this device, so we can see. Oh, cool. It says, oh yeah, there you go. MQTT message received. So this is really interesting. We do a push message. Oh, did you hear that? It was yeah, a little, little beep, 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 beep. Device ready or update available. Available. Yeah, so now it is, so it says attempting to retrieve. So now what's happening is that it's downloading that package. And this is really, really interesting. Oh, and then it said, uh, I got it. So that was the little beep. And now it's, uh, so it's decrypting it and it's un it decrypts it and unzips it, moves it into the right spot, and then it'll, re and then it'll re uh, reset. And we'll uh, open up our uh, listener again as after this device resets. And what's really cool about all this is that everything here is secure. So and, and like ultra secure. So yeah. everything is encrypted from device to cloud. Uh, when we send a package to this device and update to this device, we actually encrypt. We the, so the cloud knows the device's public key and the. The public key of the device is the identity, and so we take that and we we encrypt that uh, o, that OTA package with the device's public key, wow. and then only that device can unencrypt that package. Wow! Right, so it has the yeah. private key. The private key is stored in secure storage on the device. So there it is. It actually uh, moved it into place, and you can see all of the data, all of the information here as um, all the hardware comes up and it connects to the wireless, uh, which it looks like it did. I'm tethered to my phone. And now it is connecting to Meadow Cloud to listen to for more updates, right? And you can see oh. it is now green or blue, blue in there. In there. Oh, yeah, in there. that's cool. right. There we go, I'll tilt it a little bit. Look at that. That's really cool. Yeah, and so, yeah, can that's right. Can I also right. click one of these? Yeah, you can. There's that's cool. I like that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, now it's connecting again to the cloud because we've got this new app on there and it wants to also listen for updates. So we can actually go back here. So connecting to MQTT client. So it's doing all of the handshake and stuff with the cloud. And again, this is all ultra secure. What's really yeah. interesting is that this is all over HTTPS and it's all strong encryption, oh, right? Cool. So this is that, and that's, pretty unique because a lot of embedded devices actually don't run SSL. They're just uh, plain text yeah. comms. And you know, for our customers, security is really important. For the enterprise, security is really important. You can't have sensor data, you can't have sensitive data just going over the air that it's unencrypted, you know, plain text. And you, can, you can't just have anyone being able to push a, uh, an update to that device, yeah. right? So we've got secure boot, so you can't sideload an app. Um, the, the, the updates themselves are encrypted, et cetera. So here it is, it's, uh, it's listening for uh, the updates again. So let's go back to red. So hit publish. And here you have the general group, but you can imagine there might be cohorts, right? This might be factory one, factory two, factory three. I'm That's assuming, right. right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So you might have lots of different collections. So we heard it, said update available. That was so fast. Was so fast. Right? Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. And I it's like amazing. the little beepy noises. Now, is that is a built-in 
The speaker or something? That's yeah, so there's, do. as part of the Project Lab, there's a little piezo um, speaker in there. It's oh. actually, a, it's actually a, what they call a, a magnetic transducer, which is like a real mm. speaker. Oh, wow. Um, and we've got, in Meadow Foundation, we have this thing called Micro Audio, and it has a bunch of system sounds oh, that cool. uh, Adrian created. So we just like play system sounds, nice. success, or alert, notification. Yeah, that's cool. it really is like, it's like building a desktop app or a yeah. web app, you know, it's so fast and everything's just built in. So yeah, there it is, it got the update. Um, it was super fast, you know, it, it sent it down, sent the message, the message received almost instantaneously. It was like yeah. a second or two, yeah. and now it's, um, it has extracted it. Oh, and it's resetting. So I'm going to disconnect and re-listen to it. It's already, it's actually already uh, instantiating, and it's it's coming up. Look, it's already. Is it blue yet, or is that white? Oh, no, it's still booting. Booting up. I love to, I love to see it in action. Like it's like, oh, it's doing this. You know, it's like every time I see. Oh, there it is. Back. There it is. That's Wi-Fi right. We and that, that's right. We pushed the red this time. Yeah. So there it is. Over awesome. the air updates. Super Twice. easy. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right, Brian, I got to say, I am really appreciative that you come out here, show off everything, talk about it. Really full end to end. I know we were going to do a real big video because so much has happened with Wilderness and Meadow. Um, And I'm going to put links to absolutely everything in the show notes that we've talked about to all your videos and your V1 release uh, at the camp and everything like that. And we have an entire series. I'm going to put a whole playlist together on the .NET YouTube of all the past Meadow videos and a bunch of the other ones that we have here right on the Donut YouTube. Brian, thank you so much for coming on and talking about all this amazing stuff. Where should people go? Thanks for like having me. URL. Yeah, yeah. So first of all, thanks for having me. It was yes. awesome to be back. It's been a minute since I've seen you. <laughs> yes. Uh, and we both need haircuts. Yes. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, so go to uh, www.wildernesslabs.co. That's our website. And from there, you can go to, there's a shop link at the top and go and check out, you know, get some hardware. Or you could also just, you know, you can just go to www.wildernesslabs.co and, and then go to the developer docs from there. And you can start today without even hardware, you can start running Meadow desktop and yeah. start prototyping this stuff on the desktop, right? You don't, cool. even, you don't even need hardware anymore, which is really fantastic. Yeah, or if you awesome. have a Raspberry Pi, you can just, you know, deploy to the Raspberry Pi that you have. Um, if you want to do professional IoT stuff, I would highly recommend Getting one of these Project Lab boards. Um, I just bought one. So oh, really fantastic! Well, as we were talking, as you were demoing, just to put it in the cart, <laughs> buy. Done. So these these are awesome, and we have a limited edition carbon uh, version of these that are shipping this week. Very cool. <clears throat> um, yeah. So if you order a, a Project Lab today, you'll get a carbon version, and awesome. it comes as you see it with this nice three D printed enclosure and everything uh, you see. So you can get get up and building like right now. Let's do it, everyone. Go out. Build awesome IoT solutions with .NET and all the amazing products from Wilderness Labs. Brian, thank you so much again, and thank all of you for watching this. If you did like this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with all your friends to talk about all the amazing IoT things with .NET. Thanks for watching.